Welcome to the Coaches Show. That's Preston Ingram, head men's basketball coach here at Missouri Baptist. And coach, let's talk a little bit about the week that was uh, started out really well. The win over HLG by 35 points coming off a 35 point win over UHSP. Things were really clicking for you early in the week. Yeah, it was. Um, I thought that we played pretty well at home and kind of got back in the groove a little bit and scored the ball obviously well and uh, had some guys step up that we needed to make to step up and we saw some good stuff. And, we're hoping that we carry it over. It obviously didn't carry over the next game, but you know, I thought that we did some good stuff in the way that we wanted to be to do. Um, we're trying to gain some momentum, closing out the first round of the of the of the, of the eight conference games. Right, right, exactly. And then uh, on Thursday, the the game that you were alluding to, it didn't really carry over. That was uh, Harris Stowe, and as you and I were talking about before we started the interview, Harris Stowe is the hottest team in the conference right now. Uh, obviously, a game that you guys wanted to win, probably should have won, but. Harris Stowe is hot right now. You guys lose by, what, seven or eight on Thursday night. Yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, they beat – or excuse me, they they played Columbia within one point and really had the lead the entire game until the last minute. And then they beat us, and then they beat Central Baptist. Um, and that's a that's a high gauntlet because that's the top three teams in the league, you know. And, and then they to do that, go two and one in that part, says a lot. I, I, I thought their pressure got to us. I thought they really pressured us really hard. And, um, they guy was able to get up underneath us and not let us to be the freelance and flow right. like we did in the previous two games. And that's due credit to them. You know, I mean, it's always been a hard fought battle over there at their place. And, right. and um, they're obviously, they're scratching, they're hungry. And uh, they beat Woods at Woods. You know, I mean, like, it's not like they're, they're not just at the bottom. I mean, like, they are good. And Coach Cook does a wonderful job. And he's about winning. And he's been a proven winner at the junior college level over at Fort Scott. And so, I expect them to continue to kind of do what they're doing. I mean, they just moved up to the middle of the pack, and I think they're going to continue that. So they're not that far out of a couple slots of where we need to be at, where they want to be at also, too. One more point on that. Uh, watching the game, obviously, I wasn't there in person at Harris Stowe. Their crowd, you you almost want to replicate the energy oh, that you get from that crowd. Man. Like, and I know that's been kind of a, a contention point here, you know, at Missouri Baptist with the crowds, you know, maybe not the extent to which Harris Stowe sometimes takes it, but there's energy in that building. You Massive know, and, energy. and that's a home court advantage for them. No question about it. I mean, it, it's like you can't hear. Yes. When I'm screaming, like the players that they can't hear. And and, and the crazy thing is like, there's, there, you know, their stands are way off the floor. Right, right. Um, but that's what college basketball should be about. College athletics should be about is excitement and, and, and a certain pizzazz that's going on and marquee games such as that. and. I mean, like you, you go back to the Kansas Kansas State game last night, mm -hmm. and, and 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 the energy that goes in there, and you know you got Coach Self and Coach Tang that are trying to jockey to try to figure out what's going on, and the energy is such a pizzazz on that part, and uh, obviously that's I know it's something that myself and Coach Pearson and all the other coaches kind of want from here, being a predominant athletic school with a lot of athletes here, we, we need to get rowdy, we need to be loud, we need to get that that championship environment that we had last year in the championship game it needs to be like that all the time and and i think that that was that was an x factor for them yeah. they they fed off of that and because of that it continued um in their energetic of the they made shots that were off balance and a lot of that is it's confidence level that they're getting from the crowd and so that is something that i wish that we can can, can that we could get here and maybe change that mindset a little bit on that part. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned a moment ago, halfway point of the conference season. I know I kind of asked you this, you know, last week, but sort of the assessment, you're 10 up, 10 down, you know, not where you want to be. You talked a moment ago before we started about your RPI, strength of schedule, all that stuff. Just generally, you know, give us the 10,000 foot view, how you think this team is right now at really the halfway point yeah. of the conference season. We're. Uh... I don't know. There's sometimes and sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think that we got a chance to be really good, and sometimes I think that we're uh, get a little lackluster and complacent, and we fall into a trap of trying to prove something um, that we don't need to prove instead of just being about winning. And I think that, you know, we're talking to the guys today and just changing your face, changing, changing your face, and and changing your whole entire outlook of what it is that we need to do to be able to be successful, and just be about winning, just be about winning, and play with great joy, great passion, great energy, great. Um, uh, being a servant leader of giving to the next and not just wanting for your own, but get providing. You know, we talk about a lot about providing. Uh, I think I'm on these guys a lot about just provide. And it doesn't matter, just provide. Just provide something of, of, of for the next person. You know, early in the year, we did a, uh, we did a uh, deal uh, over at uh, Feeding My Starving Children over at Gateway Christian Church and where I go to church at. And 
It was the whole concept was just provide. Mm -hmm. Give something to somebody else that doesn't have. And, and if that's the case, whether it's me clapping, whether it's me providing joy, whether it's me providing on the floor or whatever that it is, just provide. And uh, if we do those things, I think we'll be fine. I think we have a great chance. We still control our own destiny in our, there in the conference uh, with eight games to play. We just got to go one and zero, and that starts yesterday. That we need to go one and zero, and today we I thought we got better today in practice today. It's one of our better practices we've had, and from an engagement standpoint, uh, now tomorrow morning when we do shoot around before we go play Woods, we need to go one and zero again. And if we do those things, I think we'll be okay. But if not, then we're going to be exactly where we're at, about 500, and it's because we're going one step, one step. And we just going to be sometimes, sometimes it's not going to be good. So hopefully we can continue that trend. We've, uh, we're going to talk about the upcoming schedule in a second, but one of the things you've kind of mentioned the last few times that we talked is finding that that third scorer, you know, when, when you know, Andrews or Hardy are having a bad game or not, maybe not even a bad game, just not scoring, you know, double figures or whatever. I think over the last three games with Brevin McMullen starting, he's starting to starting to get there, led you guys in scoring, even in the loss to uh, Harris Stowe, scored 18 points. So yep. maybe that's, you know, on the horizon. Absolutely. You, know, you finally have some, and Bryce is right there too, I would say. Yeah, yeah. no doubt, no doubt about it. I mean, like, uh, you know, I think Brevin has obviously took a range of the opportunities being given on that part, and uh, uh, it's exciting to see it because he provides a whole other dynamic by opening up the floor. Right. Uh, and then it allows Tyrell or Jadis to, to get where we want. You know, another great point is even in the loss, uh, Jadis had a double double. Right. You know, I mean, he had, had 10 assists, 10, or 11, 11 assists. assists actually, he had 11 yeah. assists, five steals. Yeah five rebounds, you know, and I think like 10, like 10 11, 12 points, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it allows him to be able to then just facilitate and do what he does best, is move the basketball around and be able to do different stuff. Now, I don't want us falling in love with the three-point jump shot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing I've been talking to Bryce about and even Nico about, is getting downhill and getting to the rim. Right. And, you know, allowing Brevin and Hardy and those guys to be able to kind of do what they do necessarily. But it has been a positive point for us. And hopefully we're able to provide, again, continuing. and. That's what I asked Brevin to do, is just provide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the very beginning of the year, he did that. We kind of got away from it. Now he's getting back to it again, and uh, hopefully he continues that. Yeah, and you mentioned the upcoming schedule. Uh, that we're filming this on, on Wednesday, so tomorrow night you guys will be at William Woods. And there's a lot of similarities between you guys, not necessarily style of play and things right. like that, but the expectations that they had coming into the season, the expectations that you had, both of you are coming in right around 500. You know, it's a good time for one of these two teams to get hot. Hopefully, it's you guys. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And I also think that both of us have been kind of struggling a little bit yeah. with confidence and trying to figure stuff out. I mean, you look at them, you look at us, and we're we're, we're not too far off necessarily. Um, you know, they're a big physical team. You know, and whenever I showed the game against Lion, what they had the other night, um, and then I showed them our game, and it's polar opposites. Whenever we walk in, you know, teams come in with a certain understanding and expectation of what they feel like. Now, that's due credit and respect on that part, uh, but it's going to be a physical game. It's going to be a, a live environment over there in the Andy. Right. Charles Belt does a phenomenal job of getting the Andy packed. Uh, it's going to be rocking. Uh, it's, again, another live experience right. on that part. You talk about that uh, with Harris Stowe, and the, the Andy is no different, except for it's one side and, and it bounces off the wall. Uh, it's loud. It's exciting. It's, it's a great environment. Uh, last year we had a we had a phenomenal game over there last year and uh, it was kind of one of the games that helped clinch the like the uh, the uh, the, uh, the title for us last year. But um, I'm expecting them to come in and play hard and be physical. And Peters and Yohe and 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 and, and, and uh, Crutcher and Swartz and all those guys go in there and do all those things what they want to do on that part. And so it should be a fun environment for sure. And one of the things, I mean, I'm not asking you to give away strategy or anything like that, but it's going to be a lot different play, maybe different personnel packages for you guys as well versus what we've seen the last couple of games. you got to play a different game against William Woods. Without a doubt. you got to be strong, and yeah. you got to be physical, and you're going to have to box out. I mean, they average like 15 offense rebounds. Um, you know, when they played Harris Stowe, they had 24 offense rebounds. Um, I mean, they are on the glass, and that's one thing I've been prided in our guys is that we got to be a more physical team. We cannot match them. They have to match us. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we did a pretty good job at that the first game. Now, I didn't think we did a very good job of game rebounding um, the first game, but you know I thought that we did a pretty good job of, 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 of kind of matching on that part. Now, we've got to take the expectation up a little bit higher. Um, the other thing we did is obviously got to make shots over there yeah. and uh, because they're going to draw it out and play in a grueling game. And we got 
we want to try to get the tempo going a little bit more in our favor on that part, but they're going to be ready to go. I mean, they're going to play a lot faster than they normally have, and they're going to be ready to pop and play hard and play physical and pound the ball inside. Absolutely. And then on Saturday, you guys will travel to Lyon. Lyon, uh, you know, struggling a little bit this year, but yep. the trip to Batesville, Arkansas is never, never fun. That's no. a tough place to play. Well, they beat CBC. Right. Right. Like, they beat CBC at home. Uh, you, you know, with Lyon, they, it's not that they don't have the talent. Um, and I think Rodney does a phenomenal job also, too, getting those guys playing hard. But it's not that they don't have the talent. Uh, they have the talent, and they can get hot, and they can get going, and they got some pieces that can go in there. And at the end of the day, John Paul is still John Paul. He was freshman of the year last year. And, you know, last year, last game, I thought we did a really good he, job. How, how, I, I, how? He's at got six, a six one, man, maybe, if you're, you know. I, I tell you, you got to love him. John Paul Morgan is yes. what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. J.P. Yeah. Morgan. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the you know I guess he's investing all the time you know for <laughs> JB Mutual, uh, but you know the thing about him he's a workhorse. Yeah. He's a uh, he's he's Nick yeah. for us. Yeah. You know and, and unfortunately Nick's out right now but he, he's he's Nick he, he's he's a he's an excitement guy that brings a lunch pail. Yeah. Just a country kid that doesn't matter anything else. He's gonna hit you and if he's not infected he's gonna hit you again. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, I don't like it when we play it but yeah. I absolutely love it. But. Yeah. Uh, it, it's going to be another tough game for us down there. You know, it's always been down there. I think we've only won one time since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a little bit different. We're not guarding the triangle all the time, but um, they're going to be a tough game. And I think this will be two tough games for us, but we got to start with Woods, and then we'll take care of Saturday when he gets here. Coach, we appreciate the time. Absolutely. All appreciate right. you. That is Preston Ingram. He is the men's head basketball coach here at Missouri Baptist. And we'll be back in just a couple minutes with Sam Pearson on the Coach's Show. Welcome back to the Coaches Show. That's Sam Pearson. I'm Joel Devick, and Sam, we're at a bit of a you know checkpoint uh, mark in the season, I would say. And uh, you guys finished off the first half of conference, and you're basically two thirds of the way through the year. And let's talk about a, li a little bit about the week that was. You guys went three and zero. Yeah. Had uh, some big wins against Hannibal Lagrange and Harris Stowe. Took yeah. care of business and. Then uh, traveled to Cotty College, first time facing them in the program's history as yeah. the AMC newcomer. And they gave you a game, but uh, you ended up being able to take out the win. So what yeah. was it like coming out of out of that week? Uh, man, it was a gritty week. Um, I mean, obviously, three-game week doesn't, doesn't give you a lot of time for preparation in between each game. Um, and in all honesty, I think that, you know, with all due respect to Hannibal LaGrange and uh, Harris Stowe both, uh, I thought that those blowout wins uh, almost disguised some of our mistakes that we were making. Mm. You know, early on, not playing, uh, not playing as a unit, um, not winning the 50-50 balls, you know, allowing too many offensive rebounds, you know, things of that sort. And then going into Cotty, they kind of exposed those a little bit. Um, now, we were able to pull it off. Again, I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. Uh, but man, it was it was a challenging game, man. I thought it was officiated weird, um, you know. But that uh, you know that 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 atmosphere down in Nevada, Missouri, man, was was one heck of an atmosphere. You know, mm -hmm. that's our first time being there. Obviously, it's a smaller uh, arena, but man, the fans are sitting right on top of you, man. They were nice and loud. They were they were rolling off their energy. Uh, Cody had hit some hit some shots, man, and, and played us tough, you know. But for us to come out of that week. 3-0, I think, speaks volumes for the group that we have. Uh, you know, like you said, two-thirds of the way through the season and now halfway through conference season, you know, I, I'd like to think that we're still ascending, you know, and that we're playing our best basketball uh, as we conclude the season, man, you know, to hopefully uh, prepare ourselves uh, for postseason play, you know, whether that's here at home hosting the conference tournament or, uh, you know, God willing, we're able to make it to the national tournament, man. But, you know, we're just going to kind of continue to ascend, man, and, and uh, take it one day at a time, you know, try to get better uh, one day at a time, uh, play better as a unit, shoot it better as a unit, guard it better as a unit, um, you know, and just and just come together, um, you know, here, the, here these last, uh, this latter half of the season. So uh, we're excited for it, though, man. You know, we're excited. I thought, you know, um, you know, I, I think that reflecting on it, you know, I think that this has been a heck of a year for us, you know, thus far, uh, you know, and, and, and although I'm proud of the group, you know, I don't want to be uh, too satisfied yet, you know, so I want to continue to push them to be better uh, and for us to be the best team that we can be. Right, and you can't rest on your laurels, like you said, yeah. uh, at this point, but uh, it's important to, you know, be peaking at the right time. And That's right. It looks like you guys are still on that ascent, as you talked about. 
And with that 3-0 week that you guys had uh, in combination with the results that happened elsewhere in the conference, uh, you are sitting uh, sitting pretty first in the conference yeah. uh, all alone at 9-1 yeah. through uh, through 10 games. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we go uh, the other way. So all the teams that you had here at home, you're going to be traveling to their place and all the places, uh, all the teams that you faced on the road, they're going to be coming to the Petty. Yeah. So what's that like uh, shift in um, how the schedule plays out yeah. uh, playing for you guys? Um, well, I mean, it's going to be challenging. You know, it, it, going at Woods uh, this week, you know, we go to Woods and then we travel to Lion, you know, which are both on the road. Uh, any conference opponent on the road is challenging. Uh, you know, but I think that I think that what's best for us or, or what we need to do where our focus needs to be is that uh, second half of the season is completely different than the first half. You know, uh, Woods is playing a lot better basketball, as is Lion. Uh, and we're diff different, you know, than who we were, you know, back in beginning of November. You know, so uh, the nine point win that we had against Woods uh, to start conference play, you know, that's completely over. You know, this is a whole new game. Uh, in a new environment at their place, you know, let's take this thing one game at a time, you know, and then and then on to on into Lion, uh, which is always a tough place to play. I've never won there uh, as a head coach. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, there has been, I think, three playoff. We uh, three times we've went to the playoffs down at Lion as them as a higher seed host and have gotten 30 balled, you know, or so. So, man, yeah. it's that's a tough place to play. Uh, you know, now first time we played them again, we we uh, we handed them we you know we handed them a 40 spot or whatever it may have been. But man, they're completely different now. You know, I think yeah. that they're sitting uh, either fourth or uh, I think fifth or sixth in the conference right now. They're playing a lot better basketball. So again, man, uh, uh, what we did that nine and one uh, record the first half of the season uh, conference play is, is complete. Is, it's over now, man. It's a fresh slate. Let's see what we can do on, on the latter half of it, man. Yeah. One game at a time. Everyone's zero and zero. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. As you mentioned, it's uh, William Woods on Thursday. You're traveling to Fulton to face them mm -hmm. and uh, headed down to Batesville, Arkansas for the game against the Lion. Yeah. What does it take to beat a team twice in a year? Yeah. Because, you know, for every team, you're going to see them twice. Yeah. And for some teams, you know, going into the conference tournament, you could see them three times. Yeah. So how do you spin that as a coach for your players? Yeah. Uh, well, I spin it as one possession at a time. You know, uh, all we can do is play the possession that we're in right now as best we know how. You know, communicate as best we know how, guard it as best we know how, help it as best we know how, rebound it as best we know how. All right, well then that possession's over. Now what are we gonna do on the offensive end? You know, and then how are we gonna, how are we gonna share it? How are we gonna work inside out? How are we gonna get to the free throw line? How are we gonna get quality looks? You know, but it's one possession at a time. You know, I think that uh, with the group that we have, man, we're a tough outing for a lot of, for a lot of teams. You know, I think that, uh, you know, with the tempo that we play with, the physicality we play with, and the versatility that we can play with. You know, uh, double bigs are all guards, you know, and I think that, you know, that gives, um, that gives opposing teams trouble, you know, but we got to be us, you know, in, in, in the best version of us, you know, and I think that, you know, if we're able to do so, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, then, then, then we can take this thing one game at a time, you know, hopefully get Woods at, at Woods and Fulton, you know, which is a, a tough place to play and then on to Lion, you know, where we haven't ever won, you know, so uh, we're just going to take it one game at a time, one possession at a time, you know, one day at a time. I thought that we got into practice court today, man, and, and really amped it up for about for about 45 minutes or so, just got us a good sweat, competed a little bit, you know, and then got into the film room, got into the scout. So, uh, man, I think that we're locked in. I think that the girls understand, uh, you know, how close we are to uh, you know, to, to, to really win in this thing outright, um, you know, but it's up to me to, to keep them humble and to keep them hungry, you know, so, uh, so we'll, we'll try to do so, man, one game at a time. We'll see where the chips may fall come the end of the season. Of course. Now looking at, uh, the individuals of this team and, uh, as you said, that William Woods, uh, that team and that game, that's completely over with. You yeah. guys have, uh, altered your look a little bit. You've seen Casey Rice in the starting lineup. Yeah. Um, how does, uh, you know, those individual performances and how the team is kind of meshing together, um, you know, is, is it going to be different personnel looks for you guys against uh, William Woods and Lyon? What's what's uh, going into that in terms of how you play this team? Yeah, uh, well, right now, man, I, I'm a firm believer on if it, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You know, and I think that Casey Rice at the four right now, 
uh, gives us some versatility on the perimeter. perimeter. Uh, you know, but I, I like uh, Joel Atkins and Kelsey Williams uh, as a four or five tandem double bigs coming off the bench, you know, so it just gives us, uh, you know, some uh, some uh, versatility, yeah. you know, uh, and I think that, you know, whereas uh, Nia Ford and Bryce Dow are dynamic at the one and two, then I have to, you know, I, I have the opportunity to be um, uh, more inside as at, at the four, you know, rather than on the perimeter, man. So again, we got we got some um, we got some different ways that we can play. Uh, you know, but I think that us as an individual standpoint, you know, since the break, we've really honed in on uh, just being the best of ourselves. You know, Tiani Taylor, one of the best scorers in the country, will be the best scorer in the country, you know, and Lauren Ebert, one of the best on ball defenders and catch and shoot shooters, you know, in the country, in the conference for sure. OK, well, then I want you to be the best shooter in the conference then and best on ball defender. And I think that, you know, us really locking in on our roles uh, and, and, and being the best representation of ourselves in those roles is helping us be the better team, you know. And, and, and to start the season, man, I thought that, you know, one of our biggest hindrances were going to be our togetherness, you know, because we were returning eight players and bringing in another nine or vice versa, however that was, you know, so I was uh, I was I was kind of concerned about our uh, unity, but uh, I think that we've overcome that. You know, now it's not it's not our unity. It's not our togetherness, but it is our commitment. You know, can we be committed to greatness? You know, because we're on the verge of it. You know, uh, if we stay committed to it on and off the court, you know, how we're how we're eating and how we're sleeping and uh, you know, what we're putting in our bodies or not putting in our bodies, you know, um, will take commitment, you know, but if we're able to do that, man, that man, we, we can really be great, man. So we'll see. Yeah. Just doing the little things right. And yeah. hopefully it leads to big things. That's right. That's awesome. right. That's Sam, right. Appreciate the time as always. Always wish a pleasure, you luck against the Owls and uh, the Scots down in there in Arkansas. Yeah. On Thursday, the Missouri Baptist women's basketball team will be headed to Fulton for the game 530 against William Woods and then on Saturday at 1 p.m. against the Lions Scots for uh, Sam Pearson. I'm Joel Divick. Keep it tuned to MBUSpartans.com for everything on MBU basketball and we thank you for joining the MBU Coaches Show on the Spartan Digital Network.